By changing the system, we can completely change actually the way the world looked from space and make a much, much healthier Earth. So that's the background on the story of how we got started. I'll start out with a question. What is the biggest environmental challenge that we have today? Is it using fossil fuels for electricity? Any yeses to that? All right, is it using oil for transportation? Is it the growing human population? Few people realize the biggest global challenge we have is how do we feed the world sustainably? And the biggest challenge behind that is our reliance on animals as a food production technology. My name is Nick Halla. I'm the SVP of International at Impossible Foods. And today, I'm going to tell you more about how we started Impossible, what we're doing, and how we're solving this challenge with delicious food. So we'll start out on a farm. So this is a farm where all the neighbors, family, and friends pitch in to raise animals, grow crops, harvest crops in the summer. It's where every animal has a name. And it's a small community that is really an ecosystem for producing food and uh, engaging. And this is my family's farm. So the picture you're looking at is me with my siblings, and we are showing a couple calves, um, baby calves, to a group of kindergartners, so six-year-olds, and teaching them really what agriculture and farming means. But this was a really small ecosystem. What I didn't realize at that point is how small that was compared to the global food industry and really the way that we produce food. And so I knew pretty early that agriculture and food honestly wasn't for me. I wanted to do something bigger. And I had always been really tied to the environment, um, probably because I lived on a farm. We were outside 365 days a year, on the land, working with the land, working with animals. And I wanted to do something to make the world an environmentally sustainable place. So I ended up studying engineering. Um, was looking at a lot in renewable energy, but ended up going back into food and got a job at a company called General Mills. And it designed food systems and products for about four years. But I didn't see that environmental impact of really what I wanted to do with my life. And so at that point, I decided it was time to go to graduate school. So I went to graduate school and really followed my passion. And I studied how to commercialize renewable energy technologies, solar, biofuels, battery systems. Tried to start a bunch of different companies. And at that point, I had completely sworn off ever doing anything in agriculture or food again until I met this guy. So this is our founder and CEO of Impossible. His name is uh, Dr. Patrick Brown. And he had spent 25 years in the graduate school, uh, the medical school at Stanford, studying cancer, genomics, medical diagnostics. He had never done anything in food before, but when he stepped back, took a sabbatical, and really wanted to apply himself to whatever the biggest challenge was to the global environment, and as he started looking around, he realized it's our reliance on animals as a technology for producing the foods that we love. And I'll show us a few charts to kind of demonstrate really what he was looking at. And we'll go back 12,000 years to start. So this is 12,000 years ago. And you can see how tiny the human population is compared to the population of all wild mammals and birds. And this is a depiction of the mass, the weight, of all the animals versus humans on Earth at that point. So let's fast forward to 1976. So almost 12,000 years. What do you think happens? So. The human population increases substantially. The mass of wild mammals and birds gets cut in about half. But by far the biggest change is, is the growth of livestock. You're saying, cows? Really? And so we look at this, and now in 1976, it's more than five times as many mass of cows on Earth than all wild mammals left on Earth. Now if we fast forward another 40 years, now instead of 12,000 years, we go 40 years. Now what happens? It gets more drastic. So now in 40 years, the weight of wild mammals on Earth gets cut in half again. Human population continues to grow, and livestock gets bigger and bigger. And so our thirst and our hunger 
for meat and dairy foods is really driving all the wild mammals and all the wildlife off the earth. And it's a huge environmental effect. So when Pat started looking at this, he started looking at the numbers. And that little microsystem that I grew up on is a tiny fraction of this. But as of today, between 30 to 50% of all non-ice-covered land surface is actively used for animal agriculture. More than 30% of all fresh water. More greenhouse gases than all transportation combined. And the biggest challenge is the United Nations projects that meat consumption will increase 70% by 2050. It just doesn't work. If we want to continue eating the meat, fish, and dairy foods that we love, we have to find a much better way. And Pat realized this as a biochemist. What animals, what animals do is create foods that people love, foods made of proteins, fats, nutrients. And you look at that, and all that exists in a plant-based world. And so he looked at this as, this is a huge opportunity. So if you look at an animal now as a technology, it's a very poor technology for converting plant-based nutrients into the foods that we actually love. And so we'll use a, a beef cow as an example, the one in blue. In the U.S., which is likely the most efficient beef production system, the beef cow is a 3% efficient technology. How many 3% efficient technology exist in the world in our massive industries? I don't know if I can think of any others. Even like solar energy, which is about 15% efficiency, is much, much higher than that. So if you look at this as an opportunity now, and you go directly to the plant-based source, we can create a system that is an order of magnitude or more, more efficient than animals are, and we could have a huge environmental impact behind that. And at the same time, Pat realized, it's not just an environmental opportunity, it's a huge market opportunity. And this is extremely important for the story. So the global animal agriculture and animal foods industry is about a $1.7 trillion industry today, and projected to grow to $3 trillion by 2035, and continue to grow from there. And it's a, there are products that people love, it's products that people desire, and as incomes rise, more and more people demand these. And this is the opportunity, and this is where Pat looked at this and said, you know, his background is in science. He had spent 25 years in his dream job at Stanford, and his job description was to create, invent, explore. He never thought about doing anything in the business world before, but this opportunity and this challenge was so great that he had to. So he looked at doing it in academia, but it's definitely too slow. Talked to the big food industry, like my background, but it was completely different than the way the General Millses of the world think. Talked about going to government and talked to many governments about putting policies and systems in place to incentivize a transition to a more efficient, sustainable system, but realize that's the dead end. And the only way to do this is to start a company and create products and foods that consumers like better. And that's where I met Pat. So as I was finishing up my graduate research and graduate studies, um, I got introduced to Pat as he had this idea. And I joined him as his first employee to be his business uh, partner, really helping him scale. We are going to change the way the Earth looks from space. And so when you look at the Earth, and you look at that 30 to 50% of all land, uh, 30, more than 30% of all freshwater, and by far the biggest driver of uh, freshwater pollution, by changing the system, we can completely change actually the way the world looks from space and make a much, much healthier Earth. So that's the background on the story of how we got started.